Hello and a very good morning to you. We're delighted that you've joined us for this online service. It's wonderful to see you. The words of our opening song had an amazing truth. Jesus silenced the boast of sin and the grave. He has overpowered death itself. This is something we need to be reminded of as we try to process the impact of coronavirus. We're not used to sickness and death being an immediate threat to each one of us in our so-called developed world. We've never seen our health service workers confront anything so overwhelming. And we haven't reacted out of fear, grief and confusion on anything like this scale before. We've woken up to a reality that's been part of life for most people in other areas of the world, where the smell and nearness of death is normal. The pandemic has led many to ask the perennial question, where is God in the midst of death? Today we're going to find answers to this question by looking at how Jesus responded to the devastating news that his friend had died. David Campbell will bring us the Bible message. His subject is a matter of life and death. After the service, the Youth Bible Group will meet online at 12 noon to chat about today's Bible topic. Next week is Remembrance Sunday and the service will include a two minute silence at 11am. So to do that, the service will premiere at 10.45 and for about 12 minutes we'll have music playing in the background until David comes on screen to introduce the service before our two minute silence. Please encourage your family, friends and neighbours to tune in. 
Our next song is by the famous hymn writer Charles Wesley. Verse 3 refers to Jesus' authority over death and his hope for the grieving. He speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. Let's join in worship together with the song, O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
Our gracious Father, we thank you for this day and for the peace and reassurance that you provide. We recognise that there is much wrong in this world of ours and we pray that this nation may come to know you better at this time. We pray for our leaders. We ask that you might give them wisdom, particularly with the difficult decisions that they are faced with. We think of the tremendous sacrifice of many at this time and particularly those on the front line of our healthcare system. We ask that you would keep them safe. We recognise that many will be scared about the future and the impact of the pandemic at this time, both in terms of isolation, illness and even death. We thank you that we who know you as our Lord and Saviour do not need to be afraid. Because you sent your Son into this world in order to restore us. We thank you for the great promises, care and assurance that you provide freely to those who have trusted you. We thank you for the gospel message, the good news concerning your only begotten, your one and only Son. And we just ask, Father, that at this time more people might turn to you and that they too will experience the peace and joy that only you can bring. We give thee thanks for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us in thy Son's holy and most precious name. Amen. Stories of the Bible Jesus Raises Lazarus from the Dead This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love he did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I, let's go. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus, but Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, be okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. 
Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, The teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him? But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. Body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The ancient seal by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone.
Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Now a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay ill, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, This illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, By this time there is a bad odour, 
for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Hello and a very good morning to each one of you. I'm sure you'd agree that one of the hardest things about this pandemic are the restrictions on seeing loved ones, not being there to give them a hug. And this is even more painful when our loved ones are ill or dying. My mum, who had dementia, went into a care home in March this year, just before the lockdown. Visiting was stopped, so we didn't see her again for eight weeks. Three weeks later, God called her into his presence. Many people are asking at this time, where is God in the sickness, the separation and the dying? Does your Christian God care? Well, in our Bible passage today, we'll discover that Jesus is deeply concerned with the matters of life and death. One day Jesus received distressing news from the village of Bethany. His dear friends, Mary and Martha, had sent an urgent message about their brother Lazarus. Lord, the one you love is ill. This short but beautiful verse teaches us so much. It conveys how dear a friend Lazarus and his sisters were to Jesus. Lord, the one you love is ill. At a time when Jesus was hated by the religious authorities who wanted him dead, the love of this family was a rich blessing from God and he loved them in return. It's wonderful and comforting to know that in Christ, we and our loved ones who are ill are more deeply loved by Jesus than the love that we have for them. Watching someone we love suffer from a sudden or chronic illness can sadden us, scare us, and even make us feel helpless. And while we can't take away their illness, we can tell Jesus about it in this profound prayer. Lord, the one you love is sick. This is the prayer of my family, was the prayer of my family, from my mum when we couldn't see her. We committed her to the Lord, whose love is stronger than death. In response to the news about Lazarus, Jesus gives a, a huge surprise. Jesus deliberately waits two days before leaving. By the time he reaches Bethany, Lazarus has been dead for four days. And Jesus gives the reason for his divine delay. This illness will not end in death. No, it's for the glory of God. But what is the glory of God? Well, it's the outward display of the inward heart and the power of God. You see, through this great miracle, the raising of a dead person to life, Jesus was going to show the world God's glory and his power and reveal his inner heart about death itself. So let's look now at how Jesus responds to each member of this bereaved family when he arrives in Bethany. Firstly, Martha heard the truth about Jesus. Martha, it comes out to meet Jesus and with raw pointed emotion, she says, Lord, you're too late. The flow of Martha's grieving heart is towards despair and Jesus gently pushes against that flow. You see, Martha needs to hear the truth of Jesus' awesome power over death. Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. It's never too late with me. Martha tries to console herself in the hope of the afterlife. Lord, I know that Lazarus will rise again at the resurrection in the last day. Jesus responds, yes, Martha, there will be a final resurrection of God's people into his eternal kingdom, but you don't have to wait until then to see your brother again. Martha thought the resurrection was an event. 
But Jesus is saying the resurrection is a person. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is the life. He's the source of both. Jesus is revealing his true identity here. Only God can give life and take it away. He isn't just claiming to have the power to to raise and revive Lazarus. He's saying, I am the power that gives everything life and keeps everything alive. Jesus is the death conqueror. Laura was a Christian who studied at Oxford University and then went on to have a successful career in marketing. But her faith was really tested in her 20s when she suffered a brain hemorrhage and was rushed into hospital. After a successful operation, she felt God had granted her the amazing gift of life and she wanted to use it to help others to know more about Jesus. Six years later, Laura was diagnosed with terminal cancer of the lungs. Jesus' words to Martha became very special to her. She said, Jesus has the whole key to life and death wrapped up in his very self. To prove it, he just spoke one word and his friend Lazarus came out of the tomb. Then Jesus went on to die himself and rise again. For me, says Laura, this is the real guarantee that there is life after death. And because he's been through death for me, I don't have to fear death. A few months before she died, Laura spoke to crowds of students at Cambridge University. She said, when you face death, I want you to know there is something good to go on to. You can die in confidence in the arms of a loving God, knowing that you're safe and that you're kept as his child. What a tremendous hope Laura had. When Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life, he asked her an all-important question. Do you believe this? I pray that Martha's answer will be yours as well. Yes, Lord, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of God. So Martha heard the truth about Jesus. But then we meet Mary, who felt the tears of Jesus. Martha returned home from meeting Jesus and privately told her sister, the teacher is asking for you. Mary, with her eyes puffy and bloodshot, comes and falls at the feet of Jesus. Lord, you're too late. Mary's words are exactly the same as her sister's, but Jesus' response is totally different. He's silent. Instead of speaking truth into the sadness of her heart, Jesus enters her heart. He stands with her in her grief. And he bursts into tears. He simply asks, where is he? You see, Martha. To Martha, Jesus revealed his deity. But with Mary, he reveals his true humanity because he is the God-man, the one who feels sympathy with his tears. A few years ago, a mission worker was visiting a school in Kenya and some of the teenage girls there shared how they'd been blessed by hearing the Bible in their own language. One girl who'd lost both her parents to AIDS said the verse which helped her most was John 11, 35. Jesus wept. She said, when I weep in the night, I know that Jesus is weeping with me. I'm sure many of you watching this morning will know the pain of losing a loved one. I've been so moved by the grief of two dear women in the Madison community who live in the same street. Both have lost loved ones in recent times. One is missing her dear daughter and the other her beloved fiancé. For both, the pain is still very real and raw. Jesus weeps with those who weep. You know, whatever our suffering, Martha's message to Mary are words for us all today. Jesus is here and he's calling to you. Friends, Jesus is always present and waiting for us to come to him in our trials. So let's go to Jesus in prayer, the one who knows our sorrow. Finally, in this passage, we see Lazarus's, Jesus' triumph over the death of Lazarus. In verse 33, we discover Jesus' true feelings about death itself. We see the tears of, his, of Mary and Jesus weeping with her, and he's deeply moved in spirit and he's troubled. And this verse contains a word in the original Greek language that means to bellow with anger. He's angry with the pain that death has brought 
and troubled by the sin that brought death into this world. Death wasn't part of God's original creation. The Bible explains that decay, disease and death came from our human sin and turning away from God, our selfishness, our pride, our greed, our cruelty, our anger and violence. And as Jesus approached the tomb of Lazarus, he saw a reflection of his own tomb just a few days away and the death he would have to die to reverse the devastation of sin and death. Praise God that Jesus gave his life on the cross to take away God's judgment for our sin. And in his mighty resurrection, he has defeated what the Bible calls the last enemy, death itself. Jesus told the mourners to, to roll the stone away from the tomb. And with a loud voice, Jesus commanded, Lazarus, come out. His dead body wrapped in linen received new life and emerged from the tomb. And Jesus told them, take off his grave clothes and let him go. If you love football like me, you'll perhaps remember the name Fabrice Moamba, who played for Bolton Wanderers. During a cup game in 2012, he collapsed on the pitch and his heart stopped for 78 minutes. At his hospital bedside, his dad, Marcel, a committed Christian, was sure God would take care of his beloved son. He prayed, You're the one, Lord, who resurrected Lazarus from the dead. Now, in this moment, glorify yourself. After 40 days in hospital, many people thought that if he survived, he would have brain damage. But he fully recovered and spoke of his own personal miracle. Lazarus saw the triumph and glory of Jesus that day. He was released from death to serve the Lord. And although he would die again, perhaps in old age, the life of Christ was in him. And through Christ's own resurrection, he, like us, is able to say, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our final song this morning is Christ our hope in life and death. Let's sing it together with faith in our hearts. Amen.
Will you join with me as we close this service in prayer? Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your humanity and sensitivity shown to us this morning in that shortest but sweetest verse in all the Bible, Jesus wept. Thank you for the tears you cried so openly. They give dignity to our grief and freedom to express our true emotions. Lord, you know the pain of illness and of losing someone you cared about. We are comforted that you hear us when we call to you on behalf of those who are sick. Heal them according to your divine will. And you're right here with us, Lord, as we grieve the loss of those we have loved and now miss. In this time of pandemic, draw near to the sick and to the dying and bring your everlasting comfort to each one and the families who love them. We pray for those who have lost a parent or a grandparent, for those who have lost a child, for those who have lost a sister or a brother, for those who have lost a friend. Help us, Lord, like you, to weep with those who weep and to feel what you felt about sin and how it has marred so much of your creation. We praise you, living Lord, the resurrection and the life. Thank you for your promise the one who believes in me will live even though they die. You alone, Lord, are our hope in life and death. We praise you this morning. Amen. Thank you once again for joining our online service today. We hope that you can take some encouragement from what you have seen and heard into the coming week. In today's shot, we're flying towards the Avon Viaduct near Linlithgow. Completed in 1841, it is 442 yards in length and has 23 arches. Take care, and we look forward to seeing you next week.